So this is our agenda for today. Okay, so we'll first talk a little bit about how we can configure X-Ray with your Jira instance. Okay, then we'll go through the, pro the process uh, of the complete workflow of defining a new feature for our project, defining test cases for that feature, uh, talk about preconditions, organizing test cases in a flat and hierarchical view, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, test plans and what those are and what are the, the main purposes for test plans. Then we'll execute test cases, both manual and automated test cases. And then we'll talk about the reporting capabilities of X-Ray and also uh, talk about some of the integrations uh, that are possible with X-Ray today, including, of course, Exporter. Okay, so let me jump back here to my, my demo instance here. So as you probably know, X-Ray is a test management app for Jira that allows you to create tests and other related artifacts as Jira issues. Okay, so when X-Ray is installed, it, it installs an additional five issue types to your Jira instance. And those issue types will be uh, basically to create test cases, organize test cases, uh, plan uh, executions, and so on. A quality assurance solution as a Jira app allows a seamless integration uh, between the QA, the development, and the project management teams. So one of the most important features of X-Ray is the ability to provide the test coverage visibility for requirements based on the test results, thus taking advantage of this integration between X-Ray and Jira. So let's now talk about how you can configure uh, X-Ray with your Jira projects. Okay, so uh, there are basically two fundamental configurations. And this is also related with how X-Ray works here and the integration it has with Jira. So you can, of course, configure uh, your projects uh, for tests and for executions and for all of the other X-Ray artifacts, okay? Just, of course, X-Ray installs these issue types, but you need to configure them in your project in order to start using tests, create test sets, test plans, and so on. Okay, so this is one of the configuration aspects. You need to configure the X-Ray issue types in your project. The second way to configure a project is for requirement coverage. Okay, so uh, you can also configure a project uh, so that X-Ray can provide visibility of the testing status right within your user stories, okay? And as, as I said previously, this is one of the most important features here in X-Ray. So, of course, it takes advantage of being in Jira and having the user stories and the epics and on all your requirements, all, all your defects right within Jira. So, and because we are having also the test cases in Jira, so why not relate both of them and provide these requirement coverage reports that basically immediately tell you the status of your project in terms of testing, okay? And based on these two types of configurations, uh, there are also many scenarios uh, in which you can organize your projects, okay? So let's jump back here to, the, uh, to our documentation where you can see this section related with project organization, I'll just explain to you two different ways that you can organize projects. Okay, so the first way is to configure all in the same project. So you might be, you might have already projects working, working with user stories, bugs, tasks, and some of the other features. So uh, you can also, of course, integrate the X-ray issue types within this project, okay? So you'll have basically all within the same project. Another approach is to separate the tests or the testing artifacts that are provided by X-ray and separate them uh, of the requirements and defects that you already have. So you can leave your project as it is, so your requirements project where you have the user stories, epics, bugs, and so on, and just creates a separate pair project that will be just a project for quality assurance. So it will contain all of the X-ray uh, entities. So th these are just the two most common ways to organize projects in Jira with X-ray. And of course, the one to choose is uh, entirely up to you. So it is possible 
uh, with X-Ray to have these entities separated uh, by different projects and X-Ray has no problem whatsoever in, in terms of that, okay? We also have some other scenarios here in our documentation. Please make sure you read this part if you are starting with X-Ray. Uh, it will help you getting started with how to organize projects here uh, and the testing entities provided by X-Ray. So uh, I will now show you how you can configure particular projects uh, with X-Ray. So let's say I have a project here that is not yet configured with X-Ray, okay? And then I'm just going to show you how you can do that. So if you are using a project already and you, you need to add the X-Ray issue type screens and custom fields and all of that into that project that you are working uh, right now, you just go to the actions. You just need to go to the project settings of your project. Of course, you need to be a project administrator. You need to go to actions menu and then uh, add X-ray issue types. And this will add all of all of the X-ray issue types, including screens and custom fields and con will configure everything up to you. OK. And of course, you can also enable X-ray requirement coverage for a specific project because this, this requirement coverage capability is not enabled by default. You can just enable it for your project. And this will uh, display a web panel specifically to this, to, for you to see the status of your user stories in terms of testing, okay? So these two settings are here on the project configuration and you can use them to configure existing projects on your Jira instance. Of course, you, if you have if you are starting from scratch and perhaps you, you want to separate the testing artifacts from your requirements, from your user stories and epics and so on, you can just create a new project. And for this, X-Ray will provide this X-Ray test project template. And this template, of course, includes, again, all of the X-Ray issue types and all of the screens and fields already configured. Okay. Another important setting uh, that you might configure when you install X-Ray is uh, really going to, to the global settings here of your Jira instance. Go also to the X-Ray settings. You have, have, you'll have a page here called issue type mapping. And this is where basically you can associate uh, and say which issue types in your environments are really requirements. So in my case, I have the Epic, user story, new feature and improvement over here and which issue types are to be mapped as defects. I have the bug and sub bug, okay? So defects, uh, defect issue types will be the default issue type chosen by X-Ray. For instance, when you create a new defect from the execution screen, this will be the, de the default issue type chosen by X-Ray. Okay, so let's now go back to our uh, dashboard here. So we have a project here called a bookstore that we are going to use for this demo today. And uh, we are now ready to start with the workflow process that we have prepared here for you. That will be basically creating a new feature for this, for this bookstore that we have. We have some features already implemented here, uh, but we'll create a new feature, create some test cases, talk about the, the different test types that X-Ray provides, then planning, uh, planning capabilities of X-Ray, then we'll execute the test cases, talk a little bit about how X-Ray can integrate with continuous integration platforms. And then we'll talk also uh, more at the end uh, through the reporting, cap uh, the reporting capabilities that X-Ray has to offer, okay? So let's now create our first user story. But I have a board here that I'm using here because this project is, is basically using Scrum and, and is using the Scrum, the Scrum board. So we have a sprint here, an ongoing sprint. And you can see here that we have some user stories already implemented. And you can also see that X-Ray is already providing some information here. So as you can see, this requirement status custom field is provided by X-Ray. And this, this custom field is associated with your requirements. So in my case, they are epics, user stories, and so on. And it provides you the latest execution result based on the test cases 
that it that are associated with the user stories. So just like by looking at the, the agile board, I can see the status immediately uh, of the requirements in terms of testing. So I can see that these are all done because uh, the tests are all complete and they are all passing. I can see that this one here is not okay because, and this means that some of the tests is, is still failing, okay? And of course, I can still hear, uh, I can see this one also, and this is displaying uncovered because I do not have any tests associated with yet with this requirement. So let's create a new user story here in our board. So let's just choose the, the story issue type. Let's paste our story definition. So as a visitor, I can manage the bookstore newsletter subscription. So this user story will be also for version 1.0 and we will create the user story. So X-Ray does not provide any kind of information here. I'm just creating a simple user story here and associating it with, with my agile board over here. So as you can see, this one, this is the story over here, the book 55. I can move them to, to in progress also. And if I go to the user story screen, I can see that the same information regarding the, the requirement status is displayed here. And it's basically saying that this requirement is uncovered because I don't have any tests associated with it. So let's create a couple of test cases for this user story. And the way to create test cases is just like creating issues in Jira. So you can just select the test case here and you can create new test cases here in Jira. As as we are here, I can explain you also that these are all the issue types that were installed by X-Ray. So you have the test to define test cases, precondition, test set, test execution, and test plan. Okay, so we'll, throw, we'll go through each one of these issue types in just a moment, okay? So for now, I will cancel this dialog and I'll, because I'll just use this shortcut over here that it will fill automatically some information for me and the most important thing is that automatically associates the test that I'm going to create with this, this user story that I'm in right now. So the book 55 user story will be associated with this test case with the, the correct issue link type. So this issue link type is also provided by, by X-Ray. So let me just copy a definition or the summary for the test case that I have here. I'm going to the test details, or to, first to the general tab. This general tab contains all the native Jira issue fields uh, that you can see on issues. And then X-Ray provides these, tab, these, these additional tabs that allow you to specify the test details right from here, associate tests with test sets, preconditions, and test plans that you might already have in your environment. Okay. For now, uh, let's start specifying the test case. So as you can see here, we, we can see the test type fields. And these are the test types that are supported by X-Ray. You can either have manual tests, and manual tests are composed with a list of test steps. Uh, each step contains an action, a data, and expected result fields. And of course, uh, defining the test th the test steps is really simple. So you just start typing and define each one of the steps to, to define your, your test script, okay? But after that, you have the Cucumber test case. And this is to define Cucumber uh, tests, okay? If you don't know what Cucumber is, so Cucumber is just a tool uh, that supports behavior-driven development. Okay, so Cucumber reads executable specifications written in plain text and validates that the software uh, does what those specifications say. Okay, and the specifications will be really uh, placed here on the scenario field. So each scenario is a list of steps for Cucumber to work through. So Cucumber verifies that the software conforms with the specification and then generates a report in the indicating success or failure for each one of the scenarios and scenarios each one of the steps. So in order for Cucumber to understand the scenarios, it must follow some basic syntax rules 
and these rules or this language is called Gherkin. Okay, so if you define your test specification here in Gherkin, uh, you can uh, you can you can start specifying that the test right from here. So these are cucumber tests, and this is just a specification. Then X or a, a cucumber can be implemented in a variety of programming language languages such as Ruby, Python, Java, C sharp, or JavaScript. So you can pretty much use your your language that you're using right now to implement these test cases. Okay, so a cucumber test case is composed by two different parts. One of the the first part is the this is the part that you see here is the, the test specification. And then you have another part that is really code that will implement this specification and will execute the specification that we have here. And that code part uh, must be stored elsewhere, perhaps in your code repository. Uh, and then these parts must be merged together in order to for Cucumber to execute the test cases. So we'll see an example of this later more in detail, okay? The last type that we have here is, is the generic test type. And generic test types can serve both as automated tests and manual tests. So let's say that you have uh, currently some automated tests that are not really implemented using Cucumber. So something like uh, uh, Selenium tests that run with JUnit, for instance, in your continuous integration environment and you just need to import the execution results into JIRA. So what X-Ray does is basically creates automatically test cases that will be generic to map to your external test cases. And this is done all automatically. So you can just create the test manually from here and you call it the generic test. But if the test does not exist and you are trying to import execution results that are automated execution results, uh, into X-Ray, X-Ray will provision the test cases automatically. So it will create the test cases that will be generic. And the, on the generic test definition, you'll just see an ID uh, that allows you to identify your external test case. So this will just be for mapping a test issue in Jira with an external test issue that you probably have in Selenium or using any other, uh, any other uh, technology uh, for for uh, implementing test cases, okay? Of course, you can also have, or you can also execute the generic test case as a manual test case. So, because this is a, just an open text field, uh, you can just create a new test type here, called, for instance, an exploratory test, and then uh, use that test case to, to test a specific area of your software. And then uh, the results, well, you can also create executions for generic tests and store execution results, including defects and so on. Okay, so this is basically the idea with generic tests. They can be either manual or automated. And if they are automated, uh, if you are not using Cucumber, all the execution res results will be imported into generic test cases, okay? For our demo today, we'll just uh, be implementing both manual and Cucumber test cases. So let's uh, choose the Cucumber test type because this is the first uh, example that we'll create. And leave, let's leave the scenario empty for now. And let's create another test case. So the first test case was created. And then I can also create a test case that will test users can unsubscribe to the newsletter. Okay, and, and this time it will be a manual test case. And I'll also leave this definition as empty and it will be associated with the, uh, with the user story as we see here. So after creating the test cases, if we close the dialog here, as you can see, the test cases are now associated with the user story because we have created two issue links to the user story as you can see here. And X-Ray of course detects these issue links and displays the test cases over here. So right now, the, the, the requirement status has changed from uncovered to not run because uh, we already have some tests covering the user story, but they do not have executions yet. So this is why it's displaying not run. As you notice also here on this web panel, you can calculate uh, the status for a requirement in terms of testing for different scopes. So you can either choose a version 
or you can either choose a test plan or you, ju you can ju just leave none and this will con consider the latest execution possible for the for the test uh, executions okay you can also calculate the status for different environments so let's say that the same test case needs to test two different browsers so uh, let's say that you need to test in firefox and in chrome so you can just execute the same test case in, into different environments using different test executions, as we'll see later. And then you can just analyze the status for a specific environment. Or if you choose all environments, X-Ray will aggregate all the results. So if one, of, one, if one of the environments is failing and the other is passing, the test will display failed here because one of the environments is failing also. So let's now navigate to the test cases that were created. And we'll start with the manual test case. So test, uh, test visitors can unsubscribe from, from the bookstore newsletter. So as you can see, we have the test type that was already filled. And we can see here that on the test details web panel that you can specify the manual test steps. So instead of specifying the test steps over here, I'm just going to import uh, some file that I have here. I have the test steps in a CSV file. Just going to choose my file over here and import the specification here into this test case. So this is the specification or the test script that I need to execute in order to assert that users can un unsubscribe to the newsletter. I can also import test steps from a different test case from JSON files and also from clipboard. So let's say that you have currently your test steps define an Excel file. You just go to the Excel file, copy and paste them here directly, and you choose the format. You only have the step, you have the step and result and step data and result, and then you just import the steps and X-Ray will do all the magic for you. So it will detect the formats and import the test steps here. It is also possible to export these test steps to CSV files. Right here within the test steps, it's also possible to add attachments. So let's say that the user needs to see some kind of a screenshot in order to execute a specific step. You can just add the attachment here and the attachment will be presented afterwards on the execution screen. So a test case is just like a template. It can be executed multiple times and uh, these, these executions will be instantiated uh, using test execution issues. They will talk uh, in just a moment, okay? So as you, you can see a test case, just like a definition of a test case that can have multiple executions. And these executions, you can see them later on here on the test run section. The following section that you can see here is the precondition section. So it is possible to associate one or more preconditions with this test case. So a precondition is something that abstracts some common behavior to multiple test cases. So you can just create a precondition as a separate issue and then associate this, that same precondition with multiple test cases. So this is perhaps to prepare an environment uh, or to assert that the test can be executed without any problem. So instead of creating a new precondition issue, I have one precondition already created here. That is just for making sure that the user is subscribed to the newsletter. So I cannot test if the user can unsubscribe if he is not subscribed. So uh, this is our only precondition here for this test case. And I can see the definition from the precondition over here. Afterwards, we can see the web, the test sets web panel. And this just displays a list of test set issues here. So let's create a new test set. And this set set will, will be called subscription. And this will contain all the tests that we are going to create today. So we will have the manual test and the cucumber test together on the same test set. So this was the test set created. And a test set is just like a list of tests. It's just like a folder of test cases that you can use to organize test cases in your JIRA environment. And of course, this order here is important. So this order will be respected uh, uh, it, when uh, starting an execution from a test set. 
associating a test set with a test plan, and, and so on. Okay. So let's go back to the <clears throat> to the manual test case. As you can see, the test case is already associated with the test plan. Before talking about test plans and test runs, let's uh, now go back to our uh, cucumber test. So we are now on the cucumber test, and this test is to test that visitors can subscribe to the uh, to the bookstore newsletter. And here you can have can see the test type that we all have already chosen when creating uh, the test issue, and you can see the scenario. So this is something specific of Cucumber. You can even have a scenario or a scenario outline. I will not go into much detail regarding the scenario type. And then you can start adding uh, the scenario steps right here. So you just click Add, and you can start specifying uh, here your test case. So X-Ray also has the concept of an automation uh, test library or step library. And this includes all the steps uh, that were created previously uh, within your Jury instance. So you can just type, start typing for a, for a test step, and you can choose one of the test steps that have been implemented already, because most probably these, step, these test steps can, uh, can be re reused for other test cases, okay? Or you can just go and copy and paste the definition from the test case. So I have the definition here, I can just copy and paste the definition here. And so this is the definition for our test case, okay? So we we kind of have a problem here. So most users would like to uh, store the definitions also on the code repository, besides the code that really implements the scenarios with Cucumber, okay? So uh, we must only have a single source of truth, okay? You either consider the, the definition that is in JIRA the most up-to-date, or you consider the definition that, that is on your code repository the most up-to-date for that, for that test case, okay? So I will show you a way how you can uh, basically use your code repository to synchronize the features that are, that are there directly with the JIRA installation. So right now, I will remove these steps and press cancel, and I'll leave the steps empty because my source of truth will be the code repository and the feature that we'll be implementing in a moment, okay? So for now, uh, there is just a test case created and the test case is associated here with the user story, okay? But you'll see later how you can update the test steps directly from the implementation. Of course, Cucumber tests can also have preconditions, and these will be mapped directly to background clauses uh, in Cucumber tests. So I can just show you an example of a Cucumber test over here. Of course, I have my feature that will be mapped to the user story in our case. So this is the, really the requirement that is being tested. Then the background will be mapped to the precondition, and then each scenario is basically a test case. So this is how X-Ray maps directly the Cucumber feature files, okay? So each scenario is considered a test case, a background, a precondition, okay? So for now, I'll leave this precondition empty because our test case does not need to have any, any precondition or any background at the moment. So before executing the test cases, I'll just show you how you can organize the test cases using a different uh, using a different feature here called the X-Ray Test Repository. So each project that where you have test cases contains automatically a test repository where you can organize the tests in this hierarchical view. Okay, so you can just create folders, you can expand folders, and you can just uh, drag and drop test cases from one folder to, to the other, okay, and organize the test cases in a tree-like view. Okay, so... Uh, we provide this feature because uh, most often pe people are used to organize test cases using this hierarchical view, and Jira does not provide this view by default, so uh, here you have it. So you have the test repository, and that allows you to create new folders, organize folders, drag and drop, see uh, the tests that are orphans over here. So we can just 
come here and create a new folder for our subscription tests. And then you can just come here and drag and drop the orphans to our subscription folder. So here you have it. You can just organize the test cases using the test case repository. So this works in conjunction with test sets. So these are just two different ways to organize test issues in JIRA. So you can have this kind of organization and then you can have also organization in, into test sets. And you can even come here, press the right uh, button on your mouse and, and create a test set for these tests, create a test plan, start an execution and so on. Okay. So let's now talk a, bit, a little bit about test plans. So let's say that you are now, uh, you have defined the new test cases, you have defined the new user story and the test cases for it. You are now ready to execute the test cases. As you can see, we are also using a test plan issue over here. And a test plan allows you uh, to do two different things, okay? Basically has two different goals. So the first goal is to define the the your test campaign or the scope for your current test campaign. So my test campaign currently is version 1.0. I need to release this new version uh, uh, from my software. So I need to, I created the test plan that basically contains all the test cases that I need to test for this specific version, okay? And because I have created two test cases today, and this is my test plan and the status of the test plan that I have right now, I can add, uh, I'm going to add the test set that I have created. And this will just add the two test cases that we have created today into the test plan uh, for me to follow and to see the results. So this is the first goal, to define the scope of your test campaign. <clears throat> the second goal is to always display the latest execution results for the test cases that you have here no matter how many executions do you have for each one of them. So let's say that you can see that we have already one failing test here. So of course this test needs to be fixed. The issue needs to go back to development. The developer fixes the bug and now we can execute the same test case again without losing any of the previous executions. Okay, so you just create a new execution with the context of this test plan issue and just and then come to the test plan and see the latest execution result for each one of the tests. Okay, so this is uh, the second goal of a test plan. It uh, displays and calculates always the latest execution result for each one of the test cases. So as you can see, we only have one test execution here uh, for our test plan. And this test execution has already passed most of the tests and one of them is failing. But right now we still need to execute these two new test cases over here. Before executing the test cases, I will also talk about the test plan board. So as you can see here with this button over here, clicking this button will take us to the test plan board also provided by X-Ray. Okay, so this is another view very similar to the test repository where you can organize your test cases in an hierarchy. So you can just create uh, create folders, organize folders, create subfolders, and organize the test cases. But the test cases, the test cases that are contained on the test plan. So I have a folder called a subscription here because I have these two new test cases on my test plan. I'll just uh, drag and drop them here to the subscription folder. And as you can see, this is the status uh, for my test plan. As you can see on the issue. This is the same uh, execution status bar. And for this for this specific folder, I do not have executions yet. So this is why uh, this status bar for the folder is displaying to do, okay? So let's now create or execute these two new test cases. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use this shortcut here and I'm going to create uh, a new test execution issue for all the tests that I have in this folder that are to do. And this will be our test execution for the new test cases that we have, uh, that we added today. 
as you can see, this is already filled with version 1.0 because the test plan is already scoped for version 1.0. And on the test execution details, as you can see, you have some planned dates and you have the tests that will be added to the test execution and the test plan will be also associated with this test execution issue. So I've created the test execution issue. If I go to the test execution, as you can see, we have two different test cases to, exec to execute on this test execution task. So a test execution is just like a task for you to execute tests. There are two ways that you can assign work with X-Ray. You can just create a test execution, add all the tests that a specific tester needs to test there and assign the test execution. So I'm going to assign this test execution to me. So by the default, all the test cases will be assigned also to me. Or you can just use a single test execution for all your users and assign each one of the test runs that you have here to a specific user. And this is entirely up to you, okay? So, as you can see, our test execution, our task for executing these two tests, the, both of the tests are still to be executed. So let's start executing the test cases. So this is the manual test case. Let's press this button and press execute. This will take us to the execution page, okay? Within this page, I can set uh, pretty much any kind of detail regarding the execution for this test case. And we call uh, really this the test run. So the test run is really uh, a pair between the test issue and the test execution that contains all the execution results. So the, a test run is really an execution of a test case. So as you can see, you have some breadcrumbs where you can navigate to the project, test plan, test execution, and test issues. As you can see the summary for the test issue here. And then because a list or, or a test execution is an ordered list of test cases, you can go to the next and previous tests on the same test execution. So let's keep it here on the manual test case. As you can see, the execution status is still to do. I have start and finish dates and some information about the test execution issue. So the test environments, the revision and version. Now you can see these three panels over here. So the comments, the defects, and the evidence. So you can specify comments here. You can create defects. Okay, let's say that we find a bug. You can create a defect from here. And you can attach any kind of file. So let's take a screenshot here using my favorite tool for screenshots and paste directly the screenshot into the execution screen. And this will upload uh, the screenshot as evidence to the execution, okay? These three panels that you can see here, you can set uh, this information in two contexts. So the first context is on the overall execution uh, page here. And the second context is on the is on each one of the test steps below. So you can see in each test step, you can also have the comments, defects, and evidence. So this is because sometimes you find a bug that is not really related with any of the test steps here. You can just create a bug from here. Else you can create the bug directly on the test step. So below these three, three panels, you can see the execution details. So this will contain some information uh, that was copied basically from the test issue for, uh, so that you do not have to go back and forward to the execution screen and to the test issue screen to see this information. So as you can see that we have a link for the user story here, the test description and so on. Then you can see the preconditions. If this precondition is failing for some reason, you can just fail the test from here. If the precondition is passing, you can uh, start executing each one of the test steps. So let's imagine that the last test step is failing. So we fail the test step. We can create a defect also for this particular step. Okay, and notice when creating a defect for a test step, X-Ray includes already some information populated for you. So all the test steps from the tests until the, the, the test step that failed are included on the test steps on the description of the, of the bug. 
So users can just follow these steps and immediately reproduce the bug that was created. So let's see here the bug that was created. Okay, we can see the table here. You can see that the effects version was copied from the test execution. And of course, you can also see that some links are automatically created uh, to either the test execution issue, the test issue, and also the requirement issue. So these are just configurations. You can go to the X-ray configurations and enable or disable these, these issue links over here. Going back to the execution screen. So when you reach a final status here on the test steps, the overall execution status is automatically updated. So this test is failing because we have one failing test step. The last web panel presented here on the execution page contains the activity. So all the actions that were performed by the user here on the execution page, you can see them here. So we have finished executing this test uh, case. If we go back to the test execution issue, as you can see, uh, our test execution contains already some information. So we have one failing test case and the other is still to be executed. So let's, let's take a look at the other test case. So the other test case is the Cucumber test case. Although this is an automated test case and it is, uh, it is meant to be executed outside of JIRA, so it's not the responsibility of JIRA or X-Ray to execute the automated tests, okay? So these need to be executed by a continuous integration platform and the result can be later imported automatically using the X-Ray REST API. So this is the idea with automated tests, but you can import the execution results to have all the information regarding testing centralized in JIRA. And of course, display the requirement coverage information reflected on the, on the requirement issues such as users and epics. Although this is an automated test, it's still possible to execute it as it was a manual test. Because sometimes you have the specification, the Cucumber specification part, but the implementation part is not re really complete or there is a problem with the implementation, you can just uh, execute the test manually from here because uh, the scenario will be displayed here uh, also. So, so one, of the man one of the advantages of a Cucumber test is that it's just uh, plain English, so users can just read the specification and execute the test manually. So as you can see, our test specification is still empty because we do not have uh, executed or even created the test case, okay? So let's do that right now. So I'm going to go back to the test execution and I'll remove this uh, test case from the test execution as we'll, we'll not use this test execution to execute the Cucumber test because we are just going to uh, make our definition, create our definition, uh, push our code to our code repository and the continuous integration tool will basically do the rest. So we have a process of updating and synchronizing the feature files also to JIRA issues. So this will create and update the test definition and also execute the test case. And this will create a new test execution uh, that we have configured to be associated with the same test plan. So we do not lose uh, the, the scope that we are here on this demo. So let's now go back then to the code that we have here. So we have the implementation uh, already prepared here. So this is the implementation for our feature. So we have here our scenario with the implementation. Okay, so these are the steps. The steps are already implemented in my case in Ruby. So we have this implement implementation complete already. So the only thing to do, uh, left to do is to uh, I'm going to go back here to the test case. I'm just co going to copy this definition here. So this is the test case. So this is how X-Ray will map this feature definition to, to an issue in Jira. So you have, these, uh, have to have these tags uh, automatically here. And I can also say that this feature is linked with a specific user story or a specific requirement, okay? So 
This is not mandatory because the first time that you import this uh, subscription.feature file, Xware will automatically create the test case if it's not present yet in Jira. So because I have created the test case already and I need to update the same test case uh, to match uh, to match all, the, all the, the things that we have done in this demo today, I'll just uh, tag it with the test issue key that I have. So we are now ready. Let's let's commit our our file over here. So we'll add the changes, and we'll commit the feature file, and we push the changes to our repository. Okay. So the new feature was committed. Okay. And right now I'm going to explain you the process that we have. So we are currently using. A GitLab over here as our continuous integration platform. As you can see, a new job or a new pipeline is already running. And this pipeline is composed of two different phases. Okay, so I can show you the implementation. This is very a very simple implementation that I have done here. So the first stage is the sync feature stage, and the second stage is the test stage. So on the first stage that you can see here, we are just synchronizing all the features that were present on the, on the commits that we did and synchronize them automatically with Jira using the X-ray endpoints to import Cucumber features. So I'm just taking all the features from my commit and then producing a zip with all the features and then uploading the features, in, the features into X-ray. And of course, this will provision automatically the test cases We'll link them automatically to user stories if we have that, that configuration correct, and so on. Okay, so this is our first stage. So it will detect uh, a new feature here, and we'll it will basically update our test definition in Jira. So we can check uh, that is has been completed the first stage at least here. So we sh we should be able to see the definition right here. So here you have it. So you, you see, you can see the scenario that was really uh, synchronized from the build directly. So the users, our single source of truth right now is is GitHub or GitLab in this case. Okay. So I have the code there. I've just committed the, the new feature. I've committed the new feature containing the link to the test case and to the user story. And X-ray will pretty much do the rest and link all the information together. Okay. And then the second stage that I'm about to show you right now, the second stage is to really execute the Cucumber test. So just committed the feature. If there are features, uh, if there are feature files, Cucumber feature files committed, I will try to execute them. So I will download the feature files again. So th this, is, this is not a, a mandatory step because I have the feature files already from our site. But I'll, even though, uh, even though I have them, I'll go to the Jira installation. I'll use the X-ray REST API again, extract all the feature files that, that I have in my commits, unzip the feature files, execute the feature files with Cucumber, and this will basically execute the test cases and produce this data.json output report. And this is the report that really contains uh, which scenarios are passing and failing and which steps are passing and failing and so on. And then I'm just uploading all this information into X-Ray. So X-Ray will recognize, of course, the, the Cucumber reports and uh, updates and create a new test execution uh, and will associate the test execution with the, the existing test plan. So as you can see, the build has already uh, passed. Let's go back to Jira. Let's go back to our test plan. And as you can see right now, this was the test execution that was uh, created and imported directly from the X-Ray REST API. Okay, we can go to the test execution. We can see that the executed test was this one. We can even go to the execution uh, screen and you can see that uh, the scenario executed with, was this one and the details from the execution are here. So. I have the time or the duration for each one of the steps, and I have the status also for each one of the steps. So our test is passing. If we go back to our test execution, that of course in this case just contains one test, it is also all of the tests are passing. 
if we go back to our test plan issue as you can see we are now we have now 14 tests that are passing including our cucumber tests that you should be able to see also here this is our test and is passing the only failing tests are here are these manual tests here so what we can do right now so this issue needs to be fixed of course uh, users cannot unsubscribe to newsletters uh, of course, this is this is a, a pain. So the user needs to, or the developer needs to fix this bug. Uh, let's imagine that he already uh, fixed the bug. So let's create a new test execution just for this test case, just to to check if the the test case is already passing. So I can create a test execution right from here. Choose the assignee and press create. This will create a, te a test execution for a single test. So our manual test, it was failing the first time. As you can see, we have, uh, of course, one requirement associated with the test case, and we already have two defects because those were the defects that were uh, open uh, on the first execution. So let's imagine that right now the problem is fixed. I don't need to go to the execution screen. I can execute just the test in line from here. And then the test is passing. If we go back to the test plan, as you can see, uh, all of our tests are passing except the one test, uh, test issue that was failing. If we go back to our test plan board, you should see exactly the same information. So our subscription tests are all passing. If we go back to our agile board, we can also see that our user story is already passing. So most probably the QA team was working on this user story. And because the tests are passing, I can just close the user story and solve this issue. So we have completed, we have completed the implementation of our feature. If we go here to the feature file or to the user story, you can see that both of our tests are passing because the latest execution result is passed for the, these test cases. And you can see all of that uh, information right from here, from within the user story. So right now, I'll, I'll talk just a little bit about the reporting capabilities that X-Ray provides. So X-Ray reports can be just accessed from here. You can just go to the X-Ray reports uh, button over here. And within this page, you can access pretty much all the reports that X-Ray can offer. So. The first report that you can see here is the overall requirement uh, coverage report. So in terms of X-ray reports, you have basically two ways of, of analyzing the information. So you can see uh, the status of user stories or epics or what we call requirements, okay? And see the status of the requirements directly. Or you can just look at the testing artifacts and see uh, if if the, the tests are passing, all of the test plans are passing and so on. So these are just two ways of analyzing a project. So perhaps if you are uh, doing reg regression tests, you don't have new user stories to test, right? So you just create a test plan, put all the tests, uh, the tests for regression tests over there and just, just uh, look at the status of a test plan regarding regression tests. So you have reports for seeing uh, the status of user stories or requirements, and you have reports for seeing status of the testing artifacts. So, and this here is a report for seeing the status of the user stories in your project. So I'm filtering here. I do not have any filter here, and this means I'm considering all the user stories in my project, all the requirements. And this is the scope that I'm calculating uh, the the status so i can calculate if you remember by different versions and calculate for for a specific test plan and all of this for specific environments so i'll just leave uh, the scope empty considering the latest execution for now so as you can see we have six requirements that are okay one of them is not okay you can just click here and drill down to a table to see why is is this requirement not okay so i can see this is an epic because it contains user stories below and you can see exactly why is it failing. So I can see that one of the user stories has one test that is failing, and this is why this epic is failing. Within this report, it is also possible to 
group by other fields. So by priority of your requirement issues or by status or by resolution and so on, or even by components. Okay, so this can be, this can, can be useful uh, to see the status of your project in terms of testing. The next report is the history uh, requirement coverage report. It displays the same information, but within a period of time, okay? I can generate the report, and within the period of time, I can see that each one of these bars represents different day, and within each day, I can see the status of my requirements. So I should be able to extrapolate some behavior or the date when the tests, when all the tests will be complete, okay? Then we have the traceability report. So you can also filter uh, the requirements from here, and this report is also based on requirements. We have the same status or the same scope field over here in terms of the calculation, and then you can generate the report. So this report is very similar to the overall coverage, but it contains much more detailed information. So for each requirement, you can see how many tests are associated, how many executions were uh, were done for, for each test, and how many, many defects were, were created. Then you can look directly at testing entities provided by X-Ray. So we are looking at the report that displays the test plan metrics for our project. So I, I currently have only one test plan here on this project. I can see for each test plan, I can group tests by status, tests by test type, success rate by environments, open defects, and of course, all of these reports can be exported into CSV files. We have also the test executions report, contains the same kind of report, but in terms of test execution issues, test execution tasks. And then you have the test runs report. So if you remember, a test run is an execution of a test case. So I can just, for instance, filter, give me all the, the, the executions for a specific user, see its work, and then I can export this report and see uh, all the details regarding the execution here. Then some of these reports can also be used as gadgets for your dashboard. So I'm going to show you just a couple of examples here. So as you can see, the overall requirement coverage uh, for, the, for the user stories, you can see the overall test results also. This is based on test cases. Okay, okay, so you can see the daily history here as well. You can see the test evolution. So we have created a couple of test cases today and you can see the status of the test cases uh, for a period of time. You can group test runs by, for instance, uh, components here and see the status of the test runs directly. And because X-Ray just uses custom fields, you, you can use custom fields to configure your agile boards. You can just go to the issue search and uh, just do a search and include some of the fields that are provided here by X-Ray. And you can see that you have the test run status that displays the latest execution status for test cases and so on. Okay, so uh, right now, the only thing left to talk about are uh, is about integrations in X-Ray. So I'm first going to talk about the integration we have with Exporter. So like Lisa said in the beginning, Exporter is just a tool uh, for your Jira instance that of course is not only for test, for test management, okay? So with Exporter, you can just export any kind of issue information from Jira and produce your own customized report. And this report can be uh, created or this template can be created with Word documents or Excel documents. Just put the placeholders there, create your template report in Word, upload, upload that template into Exporter in Jira, and then use that template to export any kind of, of issue, <coughs> sorry, information. So I have a test case here. I can just choose the X-ray test report, choose the output format, PDF in my case, and this just output uh, the information from the test case. So as you can see, uh, of course, you can access the preconditions, the last, the last status of the execution, links for requirements, description, test procedure, and so on. So any kind of information that you can see in Jira, so regarding even if they are native fields, custom fields, or even uh, we have custom integrations with other add-ons regarding exporter. 
So you can just uh, just use Exporter to extract any kind of issue information from Jira. And of course, we have a tight integration with X-Ray. So Exporter and X-Ray work very well together. If you like to produce a test report uh, to send to someone that doesn't have access to Jira, just use Exporter to do that. Another very interesting integration is regarding structure. So we also have an integration with structure. Besides providing our own test repository where you can organize the test cases, of course, of course you can also produce a board uh, here with structure that will uh, display, for instance, the test cases that are associated with the test plan, the tests that are associated with user stories, and so on. So you can have this hierarchy and you can also uh, have some custom fields here of X-Ray displaying the status of these entities.